welcome back to my channel so this is writing workshop number five and today we are going to be looking at writing a set of instructions so the first thing that we need to look at is what is instruction writing so instructions are used to describe in detail how to do something in the correct way they will tell you things like what you need and the things that you might need to look out for and they will always tell you the steps in the order that you need to do those things it comes from a we always say the best writing comes from a careful plan so if you're having to go at doing this piece of writing there are two on the screen for you now that you could use and um, they give you nice and helpful prompts about things that you might want to include and as you can see that it recommends that you pick out some technical words that you are going to try and use in here because vocabulary is important so obviously this kind of text lends to talk a little bit about the kinds of vocabulary that you might want to use. So obviously this kind of text lends itself to very specific kinds of words. So time connectives are very important because they're going to tell the person who you are giving the instructions to when they need to do the action that you're going to tell them. So it might be that they need to do it straight away, it might be that it's next, after that, in a week's time. So you have to give them time specific vocabulary as well. Um, you also need to tell them prepositionally where you need to put things. So, um, why are you doing it? Where does it need to go? How are you wanting them to do it? Um, adverbs are super important in this kind of text because if you're telling somebody to do something like to put the kettle on the tray, you would want to say carefully put the kettle on the tray because you don't want them to launch the kettle out the tray that's going to end in disaster. So think carefully about the kinds of vocabulary that you are going to use in this text. Telling the person what you're going to do. So it's the actions of vocabulary are imperative verbs, also known as bossy words. They're the words that are telling the person what you're going to do. So it's the action. So add this, fold this, get this, shut this, cut that. All of those words tell the person what action they're going to do and they are called bossy words because they sound quite bossy like you're giving somebody the instruction to do that. So let's talk about what kind of things we can include. So the first thing that so the first thing that is very specific to this kind of text type are headings and subheadings. So for example, you would need the heading of your entire set of instructions so that your person knows what your instructions are about. And then you would have subheadings that run all the way through it. So you would might have a section about what you will need. Then you would have a section about what you need to do. And then at the bottom, you might have a section called important information. Um, so they're things that you can start to use in this text. Um, imperative verbs, time connectives, adverbs, all of the kinds of vocabulary that we've already talked about, super important in this text. Um, a many question sentence, we have looked at those in the past. If you're not sure what a many question sentence is or you'd like to have a recap, there is a video on my channel all about many question sentences and I will try and link it into the video um, now for you to press on. Um, chronological order, now we've touched on that a little bit earlier. Now, chronological order means writing it in the order that the person needs to do it. So there's no point in telling somebody about making a cup of tea and telling them to put the milk in the mug, put the tea bag in the mug, get the teaspoon out, if you've not first told them to boil the kettle, because they're going to be waiting a long time if at the very end you're telling them to boil the kettle to make the tea. So you have to put them in the correct order for your person to follow. And then at the very end, you can add in a section of additional information. Now, this is what takes your writing up to the next level. So it's making it more personalised for your reader. Give them a little bit more information. Maybe you might suggest a way that they could tweak the instructions so that they could do it a little bit differently. Maybe there's something that they need to look out for to make sure that they don't make a mistake. So it's all thinking about having to up-level your writing. So trying to start using these in their writing as well. So um, anybody can have a look at this and pick out somebody. Years three, four and five are also trying to start using these in their writing as well. So um, anybody can have a look at this and pick out some of the features that they're happy with. Let's identify the purpose for writing. So we're not trying to persuade somebody to do something. We are writing. We are writing to inform. So we are giving them information about how to do something. So that is the purpose for our writing. So the next one, use paragraphs to organise your ideas. Paragraphs are important, 
However, for this piece of writing, you'll be writing them in sections with subheadings and also be using bullet points. So it won't look like a story. However, you may have an introductory paragraph um, explaining what the instructions are. And then, you, like we've said, you may have a paragraph at the bottom providing any additional information. Describe setting and describe character. No, because it's not necessary in this text. Um, devices to structure writing, subheadings, headings, bullet points, front logo builds, all of those things can be used in this text. Um, then we've got use mostly correctly, so these are the types of punctuation, all of which can definitely be used in our piece of writing, particularly commas for lists. You could list in your introductory paragraph the types of people that your set, your set of instructions might be good for, so it's always worthwhile trying to put one of those in. Um, three, four, five, six words. Remember, you can Google those. The lists are everywhere, um, but we actually have them in our writing packs at school as well and focusing on joint handwriting. So let's add all of the things that we've just talked about onto our notes. OK, so they're there already. Um, we're now going to have a look at the next level of writing instructions to somebody else. So while you may be able to get a simile metaphor or a piece of personification perhaps in your introductory paragraph, it's not necessarily to somebody else. So while you may be able to get a simile metaphor or a piece of personification perhaps in your introductory paragraph, it's not necessarily necessary for this text. Speech to advance the action, again no, because it's not a conversation between two people, you are the person giving the instructions. We've talked about spelling words and handwriting and verb tenses, so remember that you're not going to tell them to do something in the past. You have got to do it in the order, and it links again back to that idea of it being in chronological order. We've talked about cohesive devices, um, and then we've got some new types of punctuation down here. Parentheses, semicolons, colons and hyphens, all of which can definitely be used in this text type. So there you go, you can see that we have added these to our list of what we had last time so that you have got more on your notes. And there is what we had from the previous slide. And then as we always talk about this, greater depth is just the ability to use everything that we talked about on the previous slides but just make sure that you are doing it consistently and at the best time. Don't think, oh, I need to throw all of these features into my writing, but not think about where to place them. Sometimes less is more. Don't go for fitting everything in. Just choose the best features that really, really work with the text that you're writing. So there you have your complete list of all the features that we've talked about. If you want to make a note of them for your piece of writing, you can pause the screen now and you can make a little note beside you. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to move on and have a look at an example of a set of instructions. We'll need section. So remember, we talked a little bit earlier about using a many question sentence to bring in your reader. So the more questions that you ask of the reader, the more that you get your reader to think and the more that the reader wants to read on to find. So remember, we talked a little bit earlier about using a many question sentence to bring in your reader. So the more questions that you ask of the reader, the more that you get your reader to think and the more that the reader wants to read on to find the answers to those questions. So we've got a many question sentence in our introduction. Are you kept awake by the sound of something tramping through your garden? Do you lie in bed trembling at the sound of another car being squashed? Do your knees knock at the thought of walking to the corner shop? If so, the likelihood is that you have the Iron Man in the neighbourhood. Do not despair, help is at hand. Read these step-by-step -step instructions and soon you too could be rid of this terrible pest. So there you go, you're kind of trying to sell your instructions to that person. You're trying to make them think that all of the other instructions that have ever been written in the past about this thing are not as good as yours. So you're really trying to boast that these are the best instructions that they can read. You've then got the what you will need section, so we've got our subheading and our colon. We've then got a list of instructions, a list of things they will need. Now, to be honest, you could improve this by adding in some description. So describe the spade, you might need a sturdy spade, a large brown sheet with no holes. So think about trying to up-level that. We've got an example of parenthesis, so a large lump of metal and then in brackets, maybe a lorry or a tractor. 
remember that there are alternatives that you could use for that so you could use a dash as well for parentheses so thinking about the kinds of things that could be used here to make your instructions better we've then got the rest of the instructions so we've then got the what you have to do section and an important note so remember that bit at the bottom is a super way to end your instructions i would never just end them by getting to the last bullet point give your reader a bit more and then if you just take a look at the what you have to do section each of my instructions start with a time connective first secondly after that now you have and then it's given you some front end verbal eventually in the end all of those add to the order of your writing and you can see that I've added in parentheses going through it just to give some more information but there is a really great example for you so you could actually have this up with you as you're doing your piece of writing if you want to steal some ideas that's absolutely fine to teach them how to make your favourite cake or your favourite biscuits and you will definitely get extra marks if you then have a go at baking it afterwards. The second one is write a set of instructions to teach your parents how to do something that you're good at that let's face it our parents are not. So for example flossing. If it wasn't for my year sixes I would have no idea how to floss but they gave me such good instructions that I can now do it really really well. So it might be that you might want to teach your parents how to dab, you might want to teach your parents how to use technology if they're not very good at it um, and you can make it a little bit humorous as well. Um, and then the last one you could write a funny set of instructions such as how to capture a superhero so you could pretend that you're helping the villains out how would you catch batman how would you catch superman how would you catch spider-man so you could make it quite twisted and you can actually make your set of instructions really funny <laughs>